You have OpenSense Firewall installed on your home or business network and you have set up the basic items of a LAN interface, VLANs, but OpenSense functionality doesn't stop there. They have plugins which can level up your setup and in this video I'll be covering my top plugins which I am currently using and you might find interesting to include in your setup as well. So let's get into it. Starting off strong, we have CrowdSec. The clue is in the name. It is a community-driven, behavior-based intrusion prevention system. It's like fail to ban, but smarter. When it detects malicious behavior, it shares threat intel with other CrowdSec users and blocks bad actors automatically. I personally choose this over IDS IPS, um, intrusion detection system and intrusion prevention system because it's easy to manage. IDS and IPS often needs fine tuning, picking up the right rules, avoiding false positives, whereas CrowdSec is a community threat intelligence, automatically pulls real-time malicious IP lists from its global user base. And on our own network, I just need this feature to be working smoothly. I'll quickly show you how to install the plugin and, and how to actually go about using CrowdSec. So log into your OpenSense dashboard. So to install the plugin, go to Systems and Firmware Plugins and Plugin section, search in CrowdSec. So I currently have it installed. Uh, so there will be a plus um, symbol down here. Click on that and you will be installing um, the CrowdSec plugin. And once it's installed, you will see it in Services and You'll see over here CrowdSec. So if you go to settings, it gives you a basic introduction and how to also test the plugin. We'll do this shortly. And if you go to overview, it has the bounces, collections, scenarios. And most of this was just left on default for me. This is when I actually did the test of um, blocking my IP address manually. So that's why it says manual ban from localhost. To test the remediation component, you will need to SSH into your OpenSense box. So I've already done that. SSH won't be enabled by default. You will have to go to Systems, Settings, Administration, Enable Secure Show, Permit Root User Login, and Permit Password Login. Enable or oh, check these three boxes and save the configuration and you should be able to root into the terminal. Uh, before I do that, let me just open up another terminal session, ifconfig. So this will show me my current IP address. It's 10.1.10.105. And to find your IP address that you will be connecting to, you can also run this command, which is echo dollar ssh client pipe curly brackets print dollar one which should obviously give you the same IP address because I'm connected to the um, OpenSense portal using my Mac um, once you've figured that out, you can use this command, which is CS CLI decisions add minus T ban minus T two minutes. And the IP address is going to be my MacBook. So once I enter this command in, I will get disconnected from the terminal session. So that will show that CrowdSec is operating successfully. And also it will ban me for two minutes. So I won't be able to log in for two minutes. So enter, still in, still connected. Yep, and now I'm disconnected. So that shows me that this is actually working successfully. So now since I've ran that command, I'm actually blocked for two minutes, so I'll be back in another two minutes. And we are back after our two minute ban. So let's go to services, CrowdSec, overview, scenarios, 
Hello, where is it? And there you go. So I have another three minutes ago. Uh, manual ban for my IP address. So we know CrowdSec is working successfully. The commands that I've entered will be added into the description box to make it easy for you guys to copy and paste things. Next up, the dynamic DNS plugin. If you do not have a business plan with your ISP, you most likely do not have a static IP address. And after reboot of your OpenSense firewall, this IP address will probably change. And if you need remote access to your home network or you have a self-hosted solution, this plugin will solve that issue. It has support from major providers like Cloudflare, which I'm currently using, DuckDNS and more. Set it once and your IP stays linked to your domain name automatically. To demonstrate this, I will be using Cloudflare and to do this first, we need to create our API token so that OpenSense can connect to Cloudflare using that API token. And this will have to be done on the Cloudflare portal. Once that is done, on the Cloudflare portal, we need to create an A record on the Cloudflare portal as well. And then we will be back to OpenSense. So let me log into Cloudflare. I've currently set this up on my device. So I will give you guys a brief guide on how to do these things. So to create the API token, you will need to go to profile, API tokens, and click on create a token. Use template. Select your domain name, continue summary, and that's how you create a token. So if I go back to my API tokens, you can see I already have a token called OpenSense and it is currently active. So once you have the token created, make sure that you keep it safe. Then you want to head down to your domain name. From your domain name, go to DNS, go to records, add a record, add as an A, you can call it a DDNS and uh, for the IPv4 address you can just give it anything it just has to be something filled in proxy proxy status disable it and add the record in so I've currently set mine as lab this will get automatically generated once we have done the OpenSense configuration then we go back to our OpenSense box so to install the plugin it's the same place as before we go to system from the plugins and this is called dd client that's it open sense dynamic dns client install that once that's installed go to services dynamic dns and settings so obviously you will have to add your settings um you can give it a description of what you want to keep it Username blank password is the API token that you have generated on Cloudflare and the host name will be hostname.domain.com So that's an example that all your hostname will be. The check IP method will be interface and the interface to monitor will be the WAN interface. Once you click that, save it and uh, in the general settings, you will need to change the backend to be DD client. And once you make sure that the service is actually running, this will propagate with your WAN IP address that the ISP provides. And that's it. That's pretty much it. So in my case, I have lab.alsombrato.com and if I have any services that are behind this domain, I don't have to connect it to an IP address, which will change once I reboot this OpenSense firewall, but this will stay static. On to the next one, TailScale, another useful plugin on OpenSense. It builds a mesh VPN using WireGuard and your devices just connect. Remote access to your network, your NAS, without port forwarding or deleting IPs, and it's a straightforward setup. To access Tail Scale, you will also need an authentication key. So once again, let's head to our portal. So it's a flower player, now we're going to Tail Scale. And from Tail Scale's main page, you have to go to settings, personal settings, keys, and just down here, you can generate your authentication key. 
give it a description, generate key. Uh, I've used maximum 90 days, so you'll have to renew it after 90 days. Once a key is generated, keep it safe. You will need this for OpenSense uh, on the dashboard of OpenSense, where we normally go to install plugins, we go to systems, firmware, plugins. Once again, you guys know the drill. Search for Tailscale and once you install this, go down to VPN, Tailscale Authentication. This is where you will add your pre-authentication key which you got from the Tailscale site. Once that is done, you will need to assign Tailscale as an interface. So go to Assignments and it should be your drop down menu. Um, I currently do not have it because I already have it set up. It's over here, Tailscale. Then you go to the tail scale as the interface, enable interface and save. Once again, this is not a tutorial on how to set up these uh, devices and services because I already got them installed on my device. I'm just giving you a brief guide on how to set these plugins and what you need to do. The next thing what you will need to do is to go to firewall, rules, Go to Tailscale interface and you have to create an IPv4, IPv4, IPv6 protocol with source any and destination any rule. What this does is allows OpenSense to communicate with the Tailscale infrastructure. So once the rule is added in, click on apply changes, then go ahead to VPN, Tailscale and settings and settings enable it. I think this is kept as default. Um, if you advertise exit nodes, you have to approve this in Tailscale. Just enabled the Tailscale on my iPhone 15. And if I go down to the Open Sense box, I should be able to see it as a pair. Status, pairs, and there you have it. So I can see iPhone 15. So that means Tailscale is working as expected on the Open Sense box. If you're into networks, this one will really get you. NTOP is a network traffic analyzer which gives you full visibility of your network. Shows who's using your bandwidth, what services are active, and can even alert you to anomalies. It's like Wireshark, but on autopilot. So to get NTOP um, installed, you'll need to install the plugin and a dependency. So we will go, once again, the same drill, firmware, plugins, and top ng so as you can see that's enabled and then we need redis so these two need to be installed once that's done go down to services enable redis rest is left as default and then we can go down to and top ng um enable it and make sure make a note of the ports so for https i've kept it as 3001 um, certificate will be the web, web GUI DLS certificate. I'm gonna go to the port. So 101 .1 is the IP address for my OpenSense box. 2001. For some reason, it doesn't work. But when I do 3000, it will redirect to 3001. Okay, that I've been Username is username and password is admin admin. So make sure to change that, which I've already done. And there you go. You can already see there's like so much detail, so much things going on over here. Um, as a network engineer, you might really enjoy and really appreciate this. So if you go to interface, go to details, click on this little chart, this little graph. You can see amount of data that's been sent, amount of data that has been received. You're receiving a lot of data. I'm going to do a speed test from the firewall from the terminal itself. Speed test CLI. And there you go. So there's a received spike and the sent spike as well. And the other nice thing that you can do over here is actually go to interface, details. And if you go to applications, you can see since startup, which applications have been taken most of your bandwidth. As you can see, um, Ookla was recently used. So I'm 
iCloud, Private Relay, Apple, Instagram, category as fun. It gives you a good overall view of your network. And last but not least is the very straightforward plugin, which gives you a nice dark theme, which is also easy on your eyes. And for your open dashboard, I think this is necessary and it is the theme Revelion. Once again, systems, firmware, plugins. Yep, OS theme, Revelion. Go to system settings, general. And we are on team, you can select Rebellion. These are the plugins I'm currently using on my OpenSense Firewall and you should give it a try too. If you found anything useful in this video, do hit the like button and subscribe. Also, if you're looking to set up an OpenSense Firewall, you might want to check out this video right here. Um, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.